Welcome to the Relationship Theory, everyone. Here we take thoughts in, we break them down, we build them up, and we play them out today. We're going to be talking about an interesting subject. It will be innocence. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Innocence. We love to think of the childlike exuberance of, well, a child. We, we love to think about the energy that comes off from, from a kid. We love to think about purity. We love to think about light, kindness, joy. We love to think about the softness of someone who hasn't seen enough of the world and and is just amazed by just how much there is in it. And that's one of the problems. We use innocence as if it's a weakness. I wonder how many people even know that the language that we apply to children and their ability to be open about something we apply that idea to weakness. We don't look at it like it's a strength. And right there, we automatically weaken any sense of ourselves that we might possibly find within ourselves when looking at children. I mean, the way you point at someone has the same amount of fingers on that hand pointing at you, right? And if you were once a child, I'm pretty sure that whatever you're saying about that kid is whatever someone has said about you. But, what I want to do is break down this word a bit just to help you see what I'm saying here. So innocence, I love to see the E-N-C-E -E at the end of any word to think essence. So when I hear essence, I think of a sense. In this case, anytime I hear essence and I hear, think of sense, I think of nose as in knowledge. I like to apply this sense of smell to what you know. So when we look at innocence, want to break that down and get inner and then we have the O which I'll call openness so the word innocence in total to me would mean the essence of inner openness what I'm trying to address here is that what we see in a child is actually something in an adult that we have ourselves and it comes with our ability to be open from within not without. We love to look at a onion as if when we cut into an onion there's so many layers. Yes, yes. Now when you're a human being this process actually happens in reverse. Whenever you shape your identity anew, what you're doing is uncovering another layer of yourself from the inside outwards. It's like one of those shock waves, those pulsating, emitting shockwaves that you get when something is hovering over water you get that you get that effect innocence would be more so like that rather than looking at what a child is amazed about as if they don't know anything innocence has nothing to do with your lack of knowledge and it has everything to do with your ability to be open with your experience with your ability to be able to crack open the layers of what you think is possible and to expose yourself to even more than what you previously thought. It's a consistent openness to the world that's happening around you from the inside out. But we really ought to look at innocence like something else that is quite powerful because it is powerful. It, it's connected to your values. Innocence is connected to your values. Your values lie in the way that you desire to express yourself and how that is expressed to your outside world and then what you receive in yourself as you see it on the outside to come back in. You see this a lot in my book. If you have, if you purchase the book, you'll see me describe this process in a many different ways a lot of the time where whatever is inside comes out and then when you see it on the outside the way you react to it adapts itself back to the inside of you to come back out again for you to adapt it back inside it's a reflective it, what's the word for it adaptive process that is the flow of innocence that's the flow of innocence that's where the value of innocence comes from it's something that you hold 
as a value, as a virtue, as an experience, as something that you wish to see and feel in touch with your senses that shows itself outright. But when you look at a child, one who owns that power completely, and you make it appear to be that their ability to be open is weak and not sensible enough and too fantastical because you, for some reason, know the world better than they do, well, what you're doing is cutting back on your own power. And not only that, you're cutting back on man. One of the most prominent ways that you can kill innocence is by thinking that you can decide someone for something else without checking in with their say-so. When you take those moments, even before they express themselves to you, when you take that and then you try to adapt their world to themselves before they can express it to you, when you think that you are protecting them before they express themselves about what they are facing in their life, you kill innocence. And not just within them, you kill it within yourself. I'm probably going to make a part two to this vlog because it seems like there's so much more that needs to be expressed on this issue but i am going to stop right here everyone thank you for tuning in this is the relationship theory i have a book out it is called you are you life relationships and how your idea of relationships affect your life please give that a view it's on amazon kindle it will be in the description box below you just have to slow down time enough to be able to see the stars in your sky so that you can actually pick a few stars to look at in your night sky. But otherwise, as always, have a great day.